Here are the islands from Mom Klesach on the mainland at Don Chien. The final view for many an islander on the long road to America. John Millington Singh, who visited the Blaskets in 1905, described the Great Blasket as an island which seemed to rise like a mountain straight out of the sea. The village on the east side of the island facing the mainland winds its way up towards the brow of the hill, tucked away now in a camouflage of desertion. The most discernible aspects of it are the remains of the congested district board's two-storied houses built in 1909. The only cultivated part of the island stretches away from the village to the right, as far as Thrai Gyari, facing in Balak Kael, and right down to Unthravan. Each of the fields has its own name. Gari Wafer, Gari Unri, Unthrasnorn, Gortfather, Ishlanborn, Fochrachen Lihig, Gortanard, Kjarnagurt. The bottom of the village, that nearest in Khala, was known as Bonanweile, and the upper part of the village as Barweile. Robin Flower, the English scholar, described the village. The old houses huddled together on the broken hill slope over the cliffs, thrown down without system wherever a convenient site offered itself. The steep little tracks run hither and thither between them. Thomas Kirhen gives an earlier picture. The Chlacha agas the Vashtail Kre evichne teishin dienta. Agas gan mor Chlach ther elanacha. Mar viuk daulo agas lav gach eingenta. The house at the top of the village was that of Thomas Belvoire Owen Odin Chle. The house of Marini Scanlawen, on Doyle where many of the younger people of the island gathered in the evenings for recreation, music, storytelling and song. Close by Andoil was one of the village wells, Thabaran Funkain. Here was a gathering place for the islanders, particularly for the women. Tamas Krahin used this as a vantage point from time to time. Bunima Makan Thabar, Murrevnana Stadon, Ni Lago Maidene, Vibachedis Fehaun, Agas Ni Chalishke Kemadon Yed. Coming up from Bonanweile, Sean Foyle O'Kahain, fisherman, one of ten children of Maras Wurish O'Kahain. Of the three who went to America, one still lives. Another lives in Wales, one other in Dublin, and the remainder in West Kerry. This dispersal is typical of the island families. Somewhat below the house of Foyle is that of Sean Vike Lenogahin. 
Sean Vaik Lane is a grandson of Padre Yokohan, known as Riyunalan, or King. The Kohini came from Inishikalan in tragic circumstances. <laughs> This house was eventually island holiday home for Robin Flower and his family. It was to the king's house, however, that Robin Flower first came. These are the remains of the king's house. Here also it was that John Millington Singh stayed on his visit to the Blaskets in September 1905. Singh was keenly observant about aspects of island life. He also brought his camera with him and has left a small series of valuable photographs, probably the first taken on the island. This is a picture of Henri taken above the village. A group of islanders outside the king's house. Henri is to the right of the picture and to his right is his daughter whom Singh described as his little hostess. Singh's notebook written in the Blaskets in 1905 described his little hostess as small, beautifully formed woman with brown hair and eyes that are usually found with this type in Ireland and delicate feet and ankles that are not common in these parts where the women's work is so hard. Singh scholars have identified the little hostess as the prototype for Peggy and Mike in the Playboy. Singh wrote a poem on the king's daughter. You've plucked a curlew, drawn a hen, washed the shirts of seven men. You've stuffed my pillow, stretched the sheet, and filled the pan to wash your feet. <laughs> 